Guru ji, why is Agura called the left hand path? And what is right hand path? Yeah, there are two teachers. There are two uh, paths. Agura is a very advanced path, which is the left hand path. It's a slippery path because it depends on complete honesty. If you don't work with full honesty in the Agura path, you'll slip and die. But uh, there is a so-called right hand path which has a syllabus and a way to learn and everything. So-called as in it's... What do you mean? It has a syllabus, you know. Hmm. It has a structure and all that. Agora, there is no structure. You can ask me what lessons I am going to teach, I don't know. Until the lessons come. So you just hang around with the teacher until you get lessons. That's left hand path. Hmm. The right hand path, you'll have a syllabus and a structure. Like Siddha Yoga is the right hand path. But Agora is the left hand path. You have to master the right hand path, then only you can do left hand path. Formlessness and structurelessness is not easy for people. In the beginning they need structure, but in Agura there is no structure. Anything can be taught anytime. Anything can happen. You can't even question anything. You just have to shut up and do. How many people can shut up and do? <laughs> and trust the teacher hundred percent. It's not an easy path because of that. But it's a fast path. Because you just trust the teacher, you do whatever it is. Yeah, my next question, like one of the questions was that people mm. say that it is the fast path. It is, because mention. there's no structure. The teacher tells you to do exactly what you have to do. You do exactly that, you get results. You don't have to use your brain much and suddenly you become fabulous. But you need to le drop your ego and that need for you to control everything. Then you can learn. Otherwise, it's not Agora. It's just another right-hand path masquerading as Agora. I wonder why there's no Agora app and Agora lessons you can learn on that app. <laughs> that also they can do, no? Guruji, why is Agora uh, called like Tamsik Sadhana? And what is Tamsik Sadhana? Is, it, is there any truth to this? Agora is not Tamsik Sadhana. Then what is it? Agora is Sattvic Sadhana. Oh. The only this Sattvic is like sadhana. a biggest myth buster. Yeah. In the Bhagavad Gita, there is a whole list of what is Sattvic and what is not. Hmm. Sattvic is something that that is alive, that has its own direction and soul. Okay. Not following the beaten path, but following your own path. So what are tamasic sadhanas like? Do they exist? Yeah, yeah, they exist. Tamasic sadhanas are for idiots. Like you don't need much intellect for that. Okay. A guru is not for idiots, it's for very smart people. So uh, tamasic sadhanas you just use a mantra and then you do use some natural materials. Hmm. There are some plants which can attract spirits into it, like a lime, you can attract a spirit into it. Oh. Vashikaran of spirits. Mm -hmm. And then you allow the spirit to go out whenever you want, then it does something and comes back into that. It's some kind of formulas that have been passed on and nobody really understands what they're doing. Hmm. You go and ask them in depth, do you really understand what you're doing? No. But I'm already involved in this. Do you understand what's going to happen later? No. They have no idea. The spirit is sitting on their shoulder like this. I can see. They can't see. I, I can see a guy who's doing spirit sadhana and say, you, your spirit is happy with you or not happy with you? I know. People without spiritual senses, whatever they do is going to be bad. It's going to be a mess. Whatever you do. If you had the spiritual senses, it could be ten times easier, hundred times easier, thousand times easier. The sadhana with full awareness is called sattvic sadhana. In Agura, you have to have full awareness. You can't have half awareness like the tamasic sadhana. Say any, th any sadhana can be tamasic. You chanting Gayatri Mantra without knowing what the hell you're doing is, is tamasic. Right. Tamas means darkness. Ignorance. Sattva is light. Uh, darkness is ignorance. Yeah. You don't know what's what. Mm. If you shut off the light in a room, you don't know where is what. Mm. Everything looks the same because it's black. Right. So, Tamasic people have no discrimination. Guruji, is Agura related to Kala Jadu in any way? No. There's nothing Kala about Agura. It's not done in ignorance. Right. That's what I'm saying. Right. It is not Tamas. Otherwise, it would be called Tamasa, no? Not Agura. <laughs> it's like Karma, no? People think it's a justice system. Then it would be called Nyaya. Why it's called Karma? Karma means action. Yeah. We'll come there. I'm going to ask It's not a justice you. system. Few questions about karma later. Okay. okay. <laughs> Guruji, do agoris perform exorcism? Yes, they need to. They don't have a, a listing on Google listings, and <laughs> they don't. They're, they're not taking Facebook ads for exorcism. If they need to do it, they do it. Are agoris friends with ghosts? Ah, huh. many ghosts. 
So this friendship is like for what? To get uh, invisible things done. Oh. To get things done in an invisible way mm. when they need it. Agar is a well protected. It's called spiritual protection. Protected by whom? Ganas. Ganas. Shiva Ganas. Shiva Ganas. They're all the worst kind of ghosts. Most oh, Shiva Ganas are ghosts. Ah, bhuts. Okay. That's why it's called Bhutnath. <coughs> okay. Shiva is called Bhutnath. Hmm. Hmm. Agaris are only part of those Ganas. They're also quite terrible. They can be if they want to be. Only those who have the capacity for violence can be non-violent. You please understand. For the others, it's not a choice. So we don't know if they're non-violent or not. Hmm. What other choice do they have? Hmm. They don't know violence. Hmm. Agari is trained in violence. Just like the Naga Sadhus train, they have their akhadas and they train. Yeah, this was my going to be my next question. What do Naga Sadhus do? What is their path Naga like? Naga Sadhus have a <coughs> gurukulam kind of system where uh, they teach only their stuff. Not really how to be successful in the world, how to be successful as a Naga Sadhu. So they get physically very strong, they do a lot of training. Hmm. They use prana and they use spirits hmm. uh, to help them show their physical strength. Nagas are all warriors. Don't fight with them, they'll kill you. And Agaris are even worse. Agaris don't have schools like that, hmm. gurukulams like that. Hmm. They are directly following the Guru everywhere. Right. What is the goal of Naga Sadhus? What do they want to achieve? Be Naga Sadhus. Yes. Be jolly. And relax. So, if you ask them, they'll say, I want to <laughs> I want to attain moksha. Huh. That's what they'll say. Okay. Nobody knows what it means. They just say it because you keep bothering them. <laughs> okay. If you stop bothering them, they'll stop saying it. Okay. We don't know what's the purpose of life. We don't have to know. We just follow our desire. Our latest desire. A proper one. A sattvic one. Which we are built for. We have the light inside ourselves to fulfill that desire. We have the DNA to fulfill that desire. Our body is made to fulfill that desire. For some it's to be an Agasadhu. For some it's to be an Aghori. For some it's to be both. You are both, right. I have learned Naga Yoga, but that's not what Naga Sadhus are. Oh. It's very different. Okay. Naga Yoga is different yoga. The founder of Naga Yoga was Trilokinath himself. Okay. It's a very different style of yoga. It's very different yoga. I would say it's even faster than Agora. Oh. But those are not Naga yogis like you see in the Kumbh Mela and other Melas. Okay, okay. Ambu Bachi Mela. Hmm. No, it's not. Those are not that's not Naga Yoga. Hmm. They're just Nagas. Okay. Naga sadhus. Mm -hmm. They're not Naga yogis. Hmm. Both are different. Okay. Nagas are the people who live under the earth. Those Ganas are, are the Naga ones yoga. who live under the sea. Oh. Yeah. Nobody knows this because they have not been under the sea. So Naga yogis live under the... Or under the earth. What? Naga yogis live under the earth. It's all irrelevant information. Yeah, okay. Nagas, Ganas, hmm. there are many different kinds of... That's not Bhuta Ganas. Bhuta Ganas are different. These Ganas are the ones who have learned, learned to breathe underwater. Bhuta Ganas. Bhuta Ganas are different. Hmm. The Ganas I am talking about are the ones who live underwater. Hmm. There are a people who live under the water. Why not? There are people living in the sky too. Sky beings. Gandharvas they are called. Gandharvas. We don't know because we don't interact, we don't hang out in nature. But outside of our four walls, what have we seen? Yeah, people are like in double J, like one is... They cannot leave their body with will and see from a different perspective yeah. and they cannot <laughs> leave them. They are waiting for moksha, like it's like retirement. Moksha is uh, cognate with retirement in human life. That's what they want. They want to retire from having a sense of self. Chuppe. That's not what moksha they, is. They are wanting this because they are ignorant and they're not, they don't really know their desires, right? The one thing is because they don't have energy to think. That's why. If you had some energy to think, you would be like, why the hell would I want to vanish and not experience myself as a self? Why would I want to lose my sense of self? Why would I want to commit suicide? <laughs>